Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Well, you are stuck like me in quarantine because of this stupid virus. I prepared a really fun video for you. It's the idea is it's a challenge to be able to take a, a really boring photo and, and turn it into a lone exposure, black and white, fine art. Let me show you. All right, so let me show you this really fun technique on how to sort of fake lone exposure with boring photos or, or you know regular photo so for example when i was in dubai the last night i was there i um i was walking around and i forgot my tripod i didn't have my filter on and the burj khalifa had some interesting clouds it was actually very like blue sky the entire time but that last night was kind of very cloudy so i had this idea of maybe uh, you know trying to uh, do some artistic, fun art, very dark, lone exposure, which I love because a while ago I was in South Africa and I saw a hotel where the entire hotel was decorated with this kind of very dark, you know, lone exposure, fine art, black photography. And I thought, oh, I've got to try this. So I shot this as ISO 1000 F4, uh, 140 of a second because it was getting really dark. But you know, it's a pretty noisy photo, but it's kind of sharp. So I'm gonna turn this into a, like a fine art photography. I'm gonna try to do this like very drastic black and white, very famous in galleries. So it's gonna be a complete fake, but uh, I'm not sure people will be able to tell the difference. So let's do this. The first thing is I'm gonna start in Lightroom with a little bit of uh, retouching, just open the shadows, bring down the highlights, do the black point. I wanna do a big black point uh, sorry, big white point, a little bit of black, something like this. I want to add clarity because I want to make this, uh, the sky really pop. Uh, the photo is very noisy, so I'm going to go to the noise and I'm going to uh, do some noise reduction. So it's just like an initial development. Uh, here is a spot, but okay, let's take it out. Maybe it might bother us down the road. And I think I'm going to boost the whites a little bit. Okay, and I want to make this photo a little straight, so I'm going to go into the uh, transform section here, and I'm gonna rotate the photo a little bit. I wanna make it straight, and then I want to do the vertical. Vertical is gonna make it uh, that it uh, fills the frame a little more. Okay, and I can go to constraint crop, and that's gonna just do that. I think I wrote it too much. Well, I just want to make him a little bit straight. The Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Incredible, incredible uh, place. Okay, cool. So now that's the basic. So now let's jump into Photoshop and let's do some magic. So edit. You'll see it's very simple. Even if you don't know Photoshop, I'm using the latest version, but this is going to work on, I mean, unless you have a very, very old version, but at least for anybody who's got Photoshop in the last five, six years, it should be good. Here I am in Photoshop and I'm going to be using the um, photography workflow upright. You see you've got like different ways of showing the different photos. I'm going to use the photography one where you basically have the photo and you've got the layers here. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to take this original layer and I'm going to copy it here on the plus uh, layer or you can press command J and that's going to duplicate the layer. You'll see it's very easy. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take this quick select tool and I'm just going to make a selection of the sky by just brushing around the Burj Khalifa okay and then the problem is that it missed out so I'm pressing Z to zoom plus I'm going to go back W to go back or you can click here on the quick select tool and I'm going to press alt on my tool and that's going to basically alt is saying don't select where I'm brushing so plus is going to select where you're brushing and uh and I'll show you, so this this is one way to do it. I'll show you actually, command D to undo, I'll show you another quicker way. If you've got a, a, another version of Photoshop is you just go to the quick select tool and you click here, select subject. And what select subject is gonna do is gonna make a selection of, of the tower. And um, then you can go to select and mask. And then you can uh, basically make it better. So Z to zoom in and take this brush here, which is uh, the feather brush. And then you just, I'm gonna paint it here because I don't want this to be selected and paint here where you have basically different things and uh, you know like sticking at like balconies and thing it's going to get it back somehow it's going to help to make a cleaner selection and uh, you have different view modes uh, black and white and uh, you know, overlay. I'm just gonna do this quick. I mean, you can spend some time, more time you spend on making your selection better. I'm just using this tool to make this better. And um, voila. 
So you see the red is masked area. So maybe let's change it to selected areas so you can see it better. So red is what is selected. It's actually a little more clear to me. Okay, that's cool. There's a bit of over selection there, but it's fine. So just, you know, really quick, you don't need to make such an incredible selection. Okay, uh, the next thing is on output settings, I'm just gonna go to output to selection. So that's gonna make a selection. So now we just have the sky which is selected and I can go to filter and that's where the magic happened. Blur gallery, pass blur. And the way pass blur works is basically you can take this arrow and you can even make it a little bended and it's gonna basically blur, do a directional blur, blur in the direction of the arrow. And you can make different arrows and it's just gonna make a different thing. Usually when you do lone exposures with filters, you get this effect because of the wind and you can make it stronger, you can make the wind stronger or you can make the wind less. But you see, it's only doing it on the sky, it's not doing it on the building. And of course, you have to take a photo that has kind of a simple building. Uh, although I'm gonna show you a more complex project at the end with the Eiffel Tower and trees and everything. So stick around till the end. By the way, if you like my videos, just give it one nice like. It really helps out to make this uh, video known. All right, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna press OK. And because we have a selection only on the sky, it should do it only on the sky. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna go to select, I'm gonna go deselect and, and see, and it's doing a pretty good job. Uh, there is some effects here, a little bit weird here, but that's kind of fine. You know, when you do lone exposure, you, sometimes you have flags, you got different things. And you know, you can, you can make it even better if you want. So you can go here and add a mask and take a brush, a black brush. So black as foreground, uh, opacity 100%. I would make the harness like uh, almost 100%. So you, it's a very sharp brush and you can just brush around there. Now you see, we have an issue is that when I do that, I'm gonna make it smaller. I'm uh, bringing it back some of the noise because by blurring uh, this image, all the noise uh, went out. You see all the noise that was, there was a lot of noise because it was a, remember it was a 1000 ISO, but that's fine because we're going to correct this later on in Lightroom. So right now, all I care is that not to have weird things. So uh, when you zoom in, you see the noise, but overall it looks kind of cool. So now we got this lone exposure effect. I'm going to close this. So file, close, save, and it's going to bring it back into Lightroom. So I'm back into Lightroom, and now we are going to install my free fine art presets. I'm giving you the link is under the video. And once you download this, you're gonna go, so I'm gonna import the preset. Basically, you're just putting your email address and you're gonna get via email, make sure it's not in your spam, a link to um, the free presets. It's completely free. I'm gonna propose you to buy all my presets, which I totally advise you to do because they're awesome. I think they're some of the best preset uh, ever done on Lightroom. I really think so. I've, I've done them for, it took me five years to make them. I have over 1,000 people who wrote me saying they were amazing. So. I think they must be. And anyway, so, but this is totally free. The link is below. You have the option to buy if you want, but you can also not buy. You're gonna get them in your email. Give it five to 10 minutes. Make sure it doesn't go to your spam. So uh, we're gonna use a black and white preset. So black and white, one, two, and three. I'm gonna go to three because three has more complexity. So black and white three, which is the one I use the most. And then I'm just gonna check my black point by holding the option key. So black point means anything you see here in black is purely 100% black. I'm gonna check my white point and I'm going to, uh, by the way, still until the end, I'm gonna tell you a little trick that can help you to boost your Instagram also. Uh, so this is good. Now on this preset, if you click here, you've got a whole bunch of circles, you see? That's gonna highlight things. You can, by making them a bit bigger, it's gonna be less visible. You can also lower the value of the circle if you think it's too much. This one I'm gonna put over the building. This one I might keep it. This one I'm gonna put it here. I'm just putting it where I think it's kind of uh, interesting. I can put this one a bit outside and voila. And look at this, uh, maybe a little more contrast. Now, so we still have the issue of the noise. Remember this issue here, we can see there is some noise and not there. So for this, we're gonna go all the way down here to uh, the post crop grain. And I'm gonna add grain on the entire photo until this becomes invisible. Uh, grain doesn't hurt. Uh, it's part of the black and white family. Uh, so on this one, I have to add grain. Uh, maybe not that much. 
And honestly, I did it for the web. If I were to print this, I would add a lot of grain. Grains print really well. Uh, it, it, it makes it sort of like really oldish black and white. But in this case, I'm doing it for the web, so I'm just adding a little bit of grain. Okay, so that's one. Let's do one more project, which is a little more complex, which is this photo I've shot. I've always wanted to take a photo of the uh, Statue of Liberty and the Eiffel Tower. So I'd sh I shot this at um, 300 millimeter to compress the image, but the photo is so boring, so boring. So let's try to make it into a beautiful fine art photography. So I'm gonna open up the shadows, bring down the highlights. There's a black, there's a white. Maybe on this one, I wanna add a bit of clarity. I want a bit of, uh, let's do some dehaze to really make this sky pop, yeah. Dehaze is good. Uh, maybe I'm gonna turn down the clarity, just a bit of dehaze. And um, yeah, so now, right now it doesn't look great, but let's go into Photoshop, so edit, Photoshop 2020. So here I am in Photoshop, same thing, I'm gonna duplicate the layer, and uh, let's make a, so this time I think I'm just gonna use the quick select tool to select the sky here around the Statue of Liberty. I'm not gonna worry so much about the inside here, because we're, that's a good thing about this technique is because we are blurring the, uh, you know, we are blurring basically all the sky, you won't be able to tell inside of the Eiffel Tower. Uh, here, I think I want to, um, I'm gonna use the um, feather tool here. So feather tool, select and mask, same thing we did before. Uh, I'm trying to select the sky. So that's the feather tool here, right here. So I'm just gonna go here and make sure that this is, Basically, uh, so red indicates selected area. Okay, so I don't want to have the Eiffel Tower selected. Maybe you can clean this up here. Yes, yeah, something like this. Okay, maybe here around the Eiffel Tower. And inside is not selected, but that's fine. You know, you don't need to be super, super precise for this technique. So I'm just gonna click off okay. Now I've got a selection I kinda like. So when the red comes, see it's still red because the quick select mode is used. So you, you press, press Q twice on your keyboard and you're gonna be back to the marching ants if that happens to you. So now we have just the sky which is selected. So same thing, I'm gonna to go to filter, I'm gonna to go to blur, and I'm gonna to go to uh, pass blur. And uh, on this one, I wanna make a really strong, uh, high speed, yeah, like super long exposure something like that, okay? The problem is that if, if I truly had a long exposure, the tree would be a little bit blurry, especially at the top because the wind hits the top. So we're gonna do a second pass on this one to make this. So now I just did it on the, um, I just did it there. Let's, let's see how it is. Okay, let me go to selection. I'm gonna deselect, all right, and look at, oh, it's pretty clean, it's pretty clean. There's a little bit of here, there, but I think it's fine. I'm just gonna leave it. Now, I'm gonna duplicate this one, and I wanna do some, some more, uh, some more, but just on the tree. So I'm gonna go back to filter, blur, uh, gallery, uh, pass blur, and um, it's a little strong. I'm gonna do a little lower. Usually the trees uh, don't, maybe a little more like this, okay. And I'm gonna apply this on the entire image, okay? The entire, entire image. And, but I'm just gonna bring it back with a mask just on the top of the tree. So now it's blur on the whole image. But now check this out. If I press the option key on my keyboard, okay, option key, option key, and press this little mask here, boom, it's gonna create a black mask. So now all of that is not visible. Now I'm gonna take a brush, B for brush, make sure the opacity is very low, like 20%, something like this. Make sure white is a foreground color. So if you don't see black and white here, you press D, and it's gonna put the default, which is, which is white as a foreground. And X, you can go from, you know, black as a foreground, white as a foreground, X, 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 X. I want white as a foreground. Okay, I'm trying to not go too fast. Some people tell me I'm too fast. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna put the harness down at zero. And I'm just gonna brush here on top of this tree to make them a little bit like if there was a really alone exposure, you know. I mean, you know, Using an ND filter is still faking the reality, you know. So either you're faking the reality with an ND filter or you're faking the reality with Photoshop. It's kind of the same thing to me. What do you think about that? Leave me a comment to tell me. Okay, so now let's go to File, Close. Let's save it and let's go back to Lightroom. Into Lightroom and now I'm gonna take the same thing. I think black and white. 
Yeah, black and white three is my favorite. Black and white three, and then I'm gonna check my black point, make it maybe a bit stronger. My white point, and then uh, I think I wanna lower the overall exposure of this photo. And let's see here, the, um, there's a, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna reset this. I'm, I'm actually gonna use a black and white two. I, I don't want a, the circle, I think there's too much. It's already very, very dodge and burn naturally. So I'm gonna use black and white two. Uh, again, this is free preset you can install. Uh, link is under the video. I'm gonna do my black point with the option key, my white point, a bit of contrast. Yeah, let's just do like long exposure like this. And like this, ooh, I like it. Maybe just a little minus clarity. A little bit of texture, yeah, that's good. I think I wanna crush the blacks even more. And I'm gonna crop this four by five because I'm gonna put this on Instagram and four by five is the best, plus I don't like the bottom of the photo. So voila, we went from here to here. On this one, we went from here to here. Really cool. I did a few other tests, I did this one. This one of the Sacré Cœur in Paris, a very old photo of mine. This one, a photo of La Défense. So, you know, it's a little cool exercise where you're stuck at home, you can play around with your photo and try this technique. And so, I just passed 100,000 followers on Instagram and I'm gonna make a game with you. If you download my preset, the free ones, even better if you get the, the paid one, it really helps to support this channel. And you retouch some of your photos using this technique and you post them on Instagram, on a po so you post them as a story and you tag me at at photo search at photo search any photo that I like I will reshare on my story to 100,000 people but within two weeks I'm gonna take the best photo if you tag me on Instagram at photo search and I'm gonna put it to 1 million people I'm gonna put it on my emailing list I'm gonna put it on my YouTube channel and I'm gonna put it on uh, on my Instagram and I'm gonna offer this person one of my color books a signed copy of a color books. So all you have to do is get my presets, free or paid, you don't have to buy them. If you can, it'd be amazing, but you don't have to. You make this technique, you post them on Instagram, you tag me at Photo Search, and you can be showcast to one million people, plus get a signed copy of my book. I hope you enjoyed the video, download the preset and have fun.